Well, hello, hello, Young and the Restless Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Friday, uh, March the 24th, 2023. Friday, March the 24th. This is not going to be a long recap because not a lot of stuff happened today because it was all about folks mingling at the event. We had the red carpet folks, you know, oh, Sharon, Sharon. Adam Newman, Sharon Newman, Adam Newman. You know, every time anybody stopped, first it was, oh, Sally Spectra, Nick Newman, any pictures, you know, pose for the picture, pictures, right? And so then Adam and Sharon walk up right after, oh, Sharon Newman, Adam Newman. And then we've got Nick looking and Sally looking at them come up. And Nick is like, of course he would bring my ex-wife, Sharon. Of course he would bring Sharon. You know, Sally's like, oh, you brought, you brought Sharon. That was too cute. Yeah, yeah. Everybody worry about everybody else, right? And then um, we had Abby, no, no, Abby and Devon, they walk up and taking their pictures. And then we have Jill, Lily, and Daniel walk up. Oh, oh, you know, Jill Abbott. Lily Winters, oh, yeah, Daniel, Daniel Robinon. I don't even know if they said his name because who knows Daniel, right? Nobody. So they're like, take a family picture because they, they would try to get them together. Like they took a family picture of Sally, Nick, Adam, Sharon. Then they, and so Devon looks and, and they're like, like, sure, because they're in front of the camera. So they can't say no. So they squeeze in and they take a picture. Um, we have Phyllis behind the scenes with her ugly mask, putting it up and looking at, folks and knowing what she's about to do which is probably going to be the way she's all shaken up is going to be something that it was not a masterful plan because see realistically when phyllis plans her attempted murders they don't lead back to her <laughs> you know yikes so whatever she and stark are doing it's like she said i'm going to lose everything behind this so I don't know right but we have um she goes up to Daniel and Lily and she's broken down she's crying Daniel I love you Daniel and I'm so proud of you when you you're gonna do great things and uh, and he's thinking like what's happening with you chick we're at a big event and she's clutching her purse like I just need you to know that and she kind of like runs off and I'm thinking thinking drive attention to yourself much Phyllis so then she sees Summer and Summer's standing there with Tracy and she comes up Summer, Summer I just want you to know I love you so much and everything I've ever done and she goes mom uh why are you doing this here you know I just need you to know how much I love you no matter what, how much I loved you. I love you so much, Summer. And Summer's like, wait, what is happening? Her reaction, Tracy's like, oh, okay, what's happening now? What's going on? <laughs> you know? And so she goes running off too. And Tracy looks at Summer and Summer looks at Tracy and Tracy's like, uh, is she okay? And Summer's like, that was weird. Like, should I be worried? That was weird. And Tracy's like, yeah, it's like your mother's coming unhinged, right? So Summer's thinking, oh my goodness. And then we have, of course, they brought back Leanna Love. You know, she caused a lot of trouble back in her Genoa City day. You know, so they brought her back. And then Mamie is at the, um, she's there. And that's the, oh, Ashley sees Leanna because Leanna's up there trying to get the scoop and dirt on everybody. Ashley goes, wait a minute, tells Tucker, look, I got to I gotta go handle her, <laughs> right? And it's there that Victor said, Ashley, like you come in here with this man and you bought his debt, you're not making good moves. There's something he says, like condescending to Ashley. And she's like, well, not that I need your blessings, <laughs> you know, in so many words. She brushed Victor off. Like, man, look, I stopped really caring about what you think about me from the day I inseminated myself with your sperm to create Abby, Victor. So anyway, 
um, she she jumps up. She's getting ready to go over there to have a fight with with Leanna, right? And Mamie steps in her way, and she goes, Mamie, and oh, she's hugging her, and oh my goodness, this is so good to see you. She goes, yes, I'm I'm staying at the house. And so Ashley's like, great, great. And she's still trying to look around at Leanna. She goes, but I have to go take care. And, and Mamie goes, Ashley, Ashley. And so Leanna says something about, At, yeah, I'm here and blah, blah, blah. And then somebody comes over and intervenes. I forget who it is. They come over and they tell Leanna, you weren't even invited to this. You got to go. Because Ashley is trying to, Mamie's blocking Ashley <laughs> on purpose. And Ashley's trying to get over there and Leanna, but Somebody ushers her out. I can't remember who, right? So that, yeah, a little chaos there. And then we got Jack and Diane a gushing about, though they can't wait. And, uh, you know, that's when she puts the ring on her finger. Oh, no. She put the ring in his pocket. No, it was on her finger when they came in, right? But then they decide that Nikki, Victor, um, and Abby... They're ushering people because she talked Devon into going. He didn't want to go. And she says, no, there's something that's going to happen there, Devon. You really, really want to go. And she goes, just trust me. And he does and cleaned up well. Hey, did anybody notice they changed the portrait pictures at the beginning of the show? They all have updated pictures, which is good because we know they got the cast together, the entire cast together for the big Young and the Restless 50th anniversary photo shoot. You know, they even had Amanda in it. So, you know, because she could be reoccurring, right? Everybody now has an updated picture in their new gown, right? And they're all looking good. I am. I really like the openings now with them updated because they go from black and white and they bring them into color. Wow, they did a good job of that. So um, anyway, what, what was I talking about? Oh, so they go into um, the uh, another lounge room of the GCAC, Genoa City Athletic, Athletic Club. Too bad Devon sold that. That was needless for them to have him sell that. It really was. It's not like he was managing it. So he could have kept it in his portfolio. But anyway, they go in there and they, they talked about how they dedicated Chancellor Park to Catherine Chancellor. And now at this monumental event, they were going to, you know, dedicate to another upstanding, you know, longstanding person in the community. And they decided to do it as for Neil Winters, right? And Devon and Lily were shocked. They were just like, wait, huh? Wow. And they went out and it's, they made it, they redecorated the lounge and it's the Neil Winters, I think jazz lounge is what they're calling it or something like that. And it's going to have jazz music, a lot of Neil's favorite, because you know, Neil had that nightclub and he played pretty much all his favorite jazz at Indigo. So I thought, now that was nice, but that was convenient. Uh, and Victor tried to manipulate Devon because quite frankly, to me, the second nominee, the second person after Catherine Chancellor, to me, it should have been John Abbott. That's how I feel. Yes, I like Neil, but let's talk about longstanding character, good qualities. Yes, in the end, with how they wrote his story with Gloria's husband and John going to jail. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all right? Because he died jail. Didn't like that. But all of that aside, because look, all that aside, he still was a staple in Genoa City. And his company is just still thriving. Mean, to me, he made a contribution. And then maybe the second person could have been Neil. But I, I understand Although I think the actor that played John Abbott has passed away now too. Uh, Comic Corner commenters, who can do some research? I think he passed away a couple years ago too. The actor that plays John Abbott. Um, but anyway, they tied that in 
nice neat little bow. And Lily and and Neil, I mean and, and Devon were like in shock. And they went over to Nikki. And Devon went first to Nikki and Victor and Abby. He goes, This is what you were talking about. He goes, This is wonderful. This is great. Thank you so much for honoring, you know, my father. And then Lily came up. Devon was still there. And she said the same thing. And she was just like, I'm speechless. So then the camera goes to somebody else, probably Stark and Phyllis up in the room. Stark is in Diane's room upstairs at the GCAC. And he's planting stuff in her room. And Phyllis comes up knocking on the door and she sneaks in and she goes, why are you in here? Why are you still, you know, what egos? Because things, things are perfect. You know, things are set. Everything is right where they need to be. Now we just got to get Diane up here, right? So then when it goes back to the crowd and Lauren comes in fashionably late, but before the announcement, looking gorgeous in her, everybody looked really good in their, their dresses, right? Um, Devon is sitting down, just looking at Neil's picture, reflecting, you know, how much he loved his father, Misty fa miss, misses his father. And then Lily walked over and she sits down, not right, right next to him, but really close to him. I think he's more on the couch chair and she just is in another one. Or she may even sit at the end of the couch, same couch he's on. And she's looking up at Neil's picture. And Jill says, you know, Devon asked me point blank if you were the behind the reason I um, changed my mind. She goes, I didn't tell him definitively, but he's going to know. And Victor goes, I know. She goes, good idea. This idea is a good idea. He goes, yep. Yeah. And that they're both looking at Devon and Lily sitting on the couch. Says, maybe these two can heal now. Right? And so Lily looks at Devon and Devon glances at Lily. And then they both kind of look back at Neil's picture. And I thought, they're going to now make baby steps to mend their relationship. Because if she know, if it's one thing, she knows Neil would forgive. I mean, Neil believed in, in forgiveness. He forgave Devon for the Hillary debacle. He forgave Malcolm for the Lily debacle. He forgave Malcolm and Drusilla. But in Drusilla's defense, Drusilla, they didn't, Malcolm didn't rape Drusilla. He did. That they wrote that as a very thin line, that whole story, because Drusilla had been sick and she was in the bed hallucinating. And Malcolm went and got her medicine. He went to get her some medicine for her fever. And he's looking at her because he had been lusting after Lily, I mean, not Lily, Drusilla forever because he was her photographer, right? And then she's like, oh, baby. You look so good. Come get in here. You know, so she was like, come on and get in. And he's thinking, okay, girl, look, you could be having a hundred and four fever, but are you okay? That's all it took. And after they're done having sex or he's done having sex with her, she's like, oh, Neil, I love you so much. And he looked at her like, Neil? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. She didn't know that was you. The woman was sick and delirious with a fever. You brought her medicine. And look at what you do. He took advantage of her. A hundred percent. He took advantage of her. But anyway, Neil forgave both of them. Because when Drusilla found out, oh, she didn't tell, oh, she didn't tell Neil. Because, you know, oh my God. She was just like, how could, how she, how dare you do this to me, Malcolm? You know, but anyway, and Devon has the ability for to forgive, like I said, many times. He ended up forgiving Lily for being the one, her negligence causing Hillary's death and the death of his child. 
So Devon has the ability to forgive, and Lily does too. Chain, Cain did how, how much? Oh Lord, cheated and Cain did a lot. He just really did. Cheated and cheated and you know they got divorced and remarried how many times, right? So it's just going to take them a minute to forgive each other. And then within a matter of four to, four to six months, they're going to have forgiven Nate as well. They are. Because Nate is family, unfortunately, no matter what he's done, um, he's family. And they will end up ultimately forgiving him. So that is it uh, for... Uh, Friday's episode, Friday the 24th of March for the Young and the Restless. Um, we're going to have Monday, they're going to carry on with the whole gala. And now we're going to get to see what plans Stark had for Diane. And we're going to see how right or wrong it's going to go. So we shall see that. I will be back Monday. Uh, there's no comments from Comic Corner because I am filming both of these videos back to back because you know I was out of town so anyway everybody back on schedule back on track I will be back tomorrow for another daily recap of the young and the restless <laughs>